In the previous episode, we discussed the structure of a neural network and how one is built. In this episode, we look to model some data using a neural network from the scikit-learn library. I'll put a link in the description as to where you can find the code and the data for this episode. Our objective is to implement a neural network that predicts the pH of water given its hardness, solids, chloramines, sulfate, conductivity, organic carbon, trihalomethanes, and turbidity using scikit-learn. We start by importing some general Python libraries that will enable us to import and manipulate our data, such as pandas, and produce graphs, such as Seaborn. First, we read our water data into Python by making use of the pandas library. And we can go ahead and use the readtsv function and put the file path as to where we store our data. And next, we can check the shape of our data. So running this here, we have 3,276 rows and 10 columns. We can make use of the head method to view the first few rows. We then go ahead and drop the possibility column as this gives what's called data leakage. So the data set was labeled as potable or not potable accordingly and pH has a large impact on this. We can go ahead and check the shape of our data frame and we can see here that we've dropped a column. So now we have nine columns. It's always a nice idea to look at the distribution of our target variable. In this case, it's pH. We can run this code here. And we see a roughly normal distribution around a mean of seven for our pH. I'm just going to go ahead and write some code here to check the number of missing values in our data frame. So I'm looking at the is na and then the sum functions. You can run this here. We can see here that pH actually contains quite a lot of missing values and same with sulfates and trihalomethanes. So in this episode here, just to keep it nice and simple, we're just gonna drop all rows that contain missing values. And we make use of the drop na function for that we set in place equals to true, so we don't need to save the data frame as a new variable. So now looking at the shape of our data frame, we have 2011 rows and nine columns. Next, we define our inputs and our target variable. In this case, our input variables are all of those apart from pH, and our target variable is the pH. We split our data into a training and a test set. We use an 80% training size and a 20% test size. So we run this here. Next, we import our MLP regressor from the scikit-learn library. So this is a neural network for regression and it is a multi-layer perceptron. In the previous episode, we looked at a perceptron just by itself. So this multi-layer perceptron has hidden layers, which we can use to add complexity to the model. We set our alpha value. We set the number of hit, we set the hidden layer size. Um, so this is the structure of the neural network where we have five hidden units in the first hidden layer and two hidden units in the second hidden layer. We set the maximum number of iterations to 500. And lastly, we fit, and lastly, we fit this neural network, which we set up to our training data. Run this here. Next, we can go ahead and evaluate our model. And we can do that by looking at the R squared score. Here we import this function from the scikit-learn library. And for this, we need two values, our predicted values from our neural network and our actual values from our test set. So first we generate a set of predictions making use of the predict function. We apply that to our X test data. We then apply the R2 score function, which we applied, which we imported from the scikit-learn library. So running this cell here, we get an R squared score of minus, of around minus 0 0.226. This indicates very poor model performance. 
as the R squared score takes a value between a negative number and one, one indicating very good performance and a negative number, very poor performance. So there are three things that we can do to try to improve this model. First, we can drop columns that contain a large number of missing values. We can apply hyperparameter optimization techniques to the neural network. So try to optimize the alpha value and the hidden layer size. Or we could collect more data related to the pH of water. Thank you guys very much for watching and I hope you learned something new.